Welcome to the Kotki Ride Home for Monday, January 4th, 2021. And yes, I had to record this twice because I got the year wrong the first time. What time confetti is and how to stop spreading it everywhere. A new development in the teleportation of information that means good things for the possibility of quantum internet. And how TikTokers raised a million dollars for the Actors Fund over the weekend with a crowdsourced, fan-created musical inspired by Ratatouille. Here are some of the cool things from the news today. It's the start of a new year, and even if you aren't one for resolutions per se, many of us tend to use this time to evaluate some of our routines and try to clean up our schedules, maybe to make more time for productivity or rest or creativity or all of the above. One way you can find gaps in your schedule to achieve those things is by getting rid of your time confetti. Time confetti is a term coined by writer Bridget Schulte when a time use expert showed her that she had nearly 30 hours of time in the week that she wasn't using, despite the fact that Schulte thought she had none at all. Despite the party-like name, the term time confetti refers more to the small scraps of free time that you have in a day and how they get eaten up by unintentional acts. I kind of think of it as the exciting explosion of realizing that you have a free moment and then the crushing realization that you have a million tiny scraps to clean up off of your rug. This tendency to fill our spare moments with unintentional multitasking and distractions can make us feel much busier than we actually are, contributing to feelings of overwhelm and burnout. The time tracking app Timely gives this example on their blog, quote, Let's say you've got home after a long day, you've made dinner and eaten it, and now you have an hour to relax before bed. But in that hour, you receive two emails. You reply to one, it's from work, it might be important, you get a few Twitter notifications and scroll through your feed for a while, then a Slack notification pings and you read the new message just to stay up to date. Then you receive an alarm reminder that you have the dentist tomorrow, so you make a note of that in your diary. These small, seemingly insignificant actions mean that your one hour of leisure time has become broken into multiple tiny episodes, or pieces of time confetti. As a result, you don't really enjoy it or relax. Instead of using it to read a book, call a friend, or relax in an intentional way, that leisure time was mostly spent replying to messages, reading unimportant updates, or thinking about something that will happen tomorrow. Whenever we try to do more than one activity at a time, we end up not enjoying either. If we don't give ourselves proper time to relax, our bodies and brains never get the chance to recharge and reset, and we feel tired, anxious, unfulfilled, and on edge. End quote. So how do we get rid of the time confetti in our lives? Timely offers a few tips. First, prioritize and focus. Make a list of everything you do on a daily basis or which needs to get done, at work, at home, or both, and start evaluating what really needs to be done, what can be done by a partner or colleague instead of you, and what can maybe be dropped. Then put those things on a schedule, especially tasks you find yourself doing multiple times a day or distracting from other work or recreation you're trying to accomplish. Email is a common culprit. Try block scheduling and set certain times a day when you check your email, and don't check it outside of those times. And to help achieve that, you might need to turn off email notifications. I mean, heck, turn off all of your notifications. I have my devices set to automatically turn on Do Not Disturb for large chunks of my workday, as well as in the evening until well after I've had breakfast in the morning. It's really tough breaking the temptation to check for texts, emails, news, and social media updates, but nothing sparks a time confetti inferno faster than checking notifications first thing in the morning and letting someone else's needs and priorities overtake your own. Now, granted, depending on your family life or the nature of your job, you may not be able to turn things off so completely, although some phones do allow you to still receive calls from your favorites list, ensuring you won't miss an emergency call from your partner, even if your notifications are turned off. But overall, do what you can to cut back and focus on one thing at once. If you're not expected to be on call outside of work hours, try logging out of Slack and your work email at the end of the day. 
Timely also recommends devoting the last 10 or so minutes of each day to planning out the next one. It can help you feel a solid conclusion to your day and feel more confident and prepared going into tomorrow. And finally, Timely recommends taking what they call deep breaks. When you are able to schedule a break, don't check your email or social media during that time. Try to avoid screens altogether if you can. Go for a walk, make a snack, listen to some music or a podcast. I know one that's perfect for a 15-minute coffee break. It's really remarkable how much more recharged you can feel after a real break without distractions from the world living in your pocket. And if you want to go even further, you can try unplugging for a whole day. This past weekend, I finally tried a 24-hour Tech Sabbath, or Tech Shabbat, during which you go completely deviceless from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday. It's not a religious thing inherently, it's just inspired by the idea of resting one day a week. The term itself was coined by Tiffany Schlein back in 2010, and has grown in popularity and into different forms over the decade. Some people do it every week, others once a month, some just do it once a year on the National Day of Unplugging. Some people allow themselves podcasts or movies if they were downloaded ahead of time, or others go whole hog and don't use any TV or internet-connected devices at all, even if they're in airplane mode. You can do it any time in the week as often as you want, make your rules however you want to, and amend it for what works best for your family life and responsibilities. But the important thing is doing it intentionally with the purpose of truly resting. You'll likely discover ways that you were tied to your devices that you weren't fully aware of. You may even feel some anxiety over losing that crutch even just for a day. You'll probably be bored, maybe even to the point of just falling asleep in the middle of the day because without excess stimulation, your body is naturally catching up on some much-needed rest. A big thing for me was getting comfortable with silence, especially as I cooked, cleaned, and walked around my neighborhood, times when I'm almost always listening to music or podcasts. Instead, I was with my own thoughts, focusing more on the world around me or the task at hand. Your mileage may vary, but for me, it was such a positive experience that I didn't want it to end. I'm going to do it as often as possible going forward and can already see how the focus and intentionality it engenders is bleeding into my online time, helping me avoid that pesky time confetti. So take it or leave it, but as someone who has always been fascinated by time management and efficiency, I think there's real power in having more time to work by taking more time to rest. I love cereal. I ate it almost every day as a kid, but as an adult, I noticed that it just doesn't fill me up. You know, I'd have cereal for breakfast and be hungry again half an hour later. But that is not the case with today's sponsor, Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is everything you love about cereal, all the amazing flavors you love, but without all the bad stuff. It has zero sugar, 11 grams of protein, and only 3 net grams of carbs in each serving. Plus, it's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. And it comes in four flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and blueberry. I, being the chocolate fiend that I am, love the cocoa one. It reminds me of all my favorite cereals as a kid. But with all that protein, I actually stay full. Go to magicspoon.com slash kotki to grab a variety pack of your own and try it today. And use our promo code kotki at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee so if you don't like it for any reason they'll refund your money no questions asked again that's magicspoon.com slash kotki and use the code kotki to save five dollars off thanks to magic spoon for sponsoring today's podcast I've been a VPN user for years. I like having that added security in my browsing and also have gotten hooked on a lot of TV shows from the UK. If you're looking for a VPN yourself, I recommend NordVPN. They've got over 5,200 super fast servers in 59 countries and use double data encryption for increased anonymity. Protect your data whether you're at home or on the go with their unlimited bandwidth and 24-7 customer support. NordVPN is compatible with Windows, Mac, 
Mac and Linux, plus it has a Google Chrome extension and an app for Android and iOS. You can secure up to six devices with just one account, including your smart TV or router, so you can be protected no matter what. And right now, NordVPN is running a special deal. Every purchase of a two-year plan will get you four additional months free. Just go to nordvpn.com slash kotki and use our coupon kotki at checkout. Again, that's nordvpn.com slash kotki and use code kotki at checkout for four additional free months on a two-year plan. Here's a headline that makes 2021 sound a bit closer to the futuristic fantasy that people pictured in the 20th century. High-fidelity, long-distance teleportation paves way for quantum internet. It's not just super futuristic clickbait, though. It's real. Or it could be. So first, what is quantum internet? Quoting New Atlas, As the name suggests, a quantum internet takes advantage of the spooky world of quantum physics to create a fast, secure network. It works through two quantum phenomena. The first is quantum entanglement, where two particles can become so inextricably linked that no matter how much distance separates them, changing the properties of one will change those of the other. And since that communication happens instantly, a quantum internet could be much faster than today's networks. The second phenomenon is quantum superposition, where a particle can exist in two different states at once. This is what enables tighter security of the information shared across a quantum network. Information is encoded into entangled pairs of photons in a superposition of states. In data terms, that means that they represent both a 1 and a 0 at the same time. With a decoder at each end, the message can only be read by its intended recipient. If anyone else tries to tap into it along the way, it will cause the superposition to collapse into a random state, which garbles the message. That makes it unreadable to the hacker, while also alerting the intended recipient about the attempt. End quote. As photons are entangled and separated, data is teleported between them. And now, quoting again, Researchers at Fermilab, AT&T, Caltech, Harvard, NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and the University of Calgary have demonstrated sustained, very accurate quantum teleportation over long distances. The team sent information over 44 kilometers, or 27 miles, with fidelity of over 90%, an accuracy record for this distance. End quote. And I emphasize accuracy because scientists in China in 2015 and 2017 did teleport information over further distances, one as long as 100 kilometers, but this latest experiment had much higher accuracy, 90% compared to 80% on that 100 kilometer one. The team also noted that they used off-the-shelf equipment, meaning that quantum internet could be achieved using existing infrastructure, which is great news, especially considering that the U.S. Department of Energy actually outlined a plan for national quantum internet in the future. There are many more milestones to hit before that becomes a reality, but dang. For us folks who may go from pre-dial-up days to quantum internet in our lifetimes, It almost feels like people who lived from the covered wagon to commercial air flight. Not quite as life-changing, but still, pretty rad stuff. Over the weekend, a Broadway production company put on a virtual musical to raise money for the Actors Fund, which helps provide emergency funds for entertainment and performing arts professionals. Doesn't sound too out of the ordinary, until you find out that this musical was an original, fan-made production inspired by Disney's 2007 animated feature, Ratatouille, as crowdsourced organically on TikTok. And that they sold over a million dollars in tickets in a matter of days. Now, to explain what's going on here, we need to back up to earlier in 2020. In the spring, a song from Disney's Ratatouille, Le Festin, as well as a parody version of that song started going lightly viral on TikTok, being used in particular as the background songs for TikToks featuring intentionally or accidentally bad cooking. The usage of these songs helped Ratatouille start becoming a bit of a cultural touchstone on TikTok, but things really ramped up in August, when TikToker Emily Jacobson wrote a quick ode to Remy, the lead rat in Ratatouille. 
With a squeaky, rodent-esque filter on her voice, the ode was already picking up steam on its own when another TikToker, composer Daniel Mertzlift, used her songs and melody to create a show-stopping finale number fit for Broadway. Here's a listen to that version. From there, things really took off. In addition to both versions of the ode to Remy being used as sounds in thousands of TikToks, others started writing their own songs, not from the original film, but inspired by it. TikTokers were duetting with each other on these original songs via a TikTok feature called Duet, where you can respond to someone else's TikTok in a side-by-side -side video. In this case, they were literally duetting, harmonizing, and acting out dialogue together using the feature. As new songs were being written, other users were tapping their talents to flesh out the rest of the story. TikTok was flooded with Ratatouille-inspired content from theater kids and professionals alike. Set designers, graphic designers, choreographers, costumers, puppeteers, composers, and musicians. Ratatouille the TikTok musical, or the Ratatousical, had been born. And then, Seaview Productions got involved. Seaview is an actual Broadway production company, responsible for shows like the Tony-nominated Slave Play, as well as Seawall, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. As a company with a mission of, quote, disrupting and reshaping the paradigm of storytelling, I guess the TikTok ratatousical was right up its alley. Seaview got several of the TikTok songwriters together with a slew of Broadway performers, as well as a passive blessing from Disney, and set up an actual, one-night-only virtual charity show. Performers included Wayne Brady, Andre DeShields, Adam Lambert, Priscilla Lopez, and Titus Burgess as Remy. Plus, like I said, some original TikTokers who helped create the whole thing, with even the official artwork being taken from a viral TikTok of one user's playbill concept, and all the TikTokers were credited and compensated for their work, which is pretty incredible. Now, even if you don't give a rat's ass about TikTok or Disney musicals, this is a fascinating development in media and storytelling. As The Verge sums up the LA Times review, quote, The show may signal a new way forward for musical theater, one without gatekeepers preventing new talent from having their chance to shine, end quote. At the very least, I'll be fascinated to see where some of the young TikTok talent go from here after having had the opportunity to collaborate with Broadway professionals. Not a bad turn of events for some theater kids who had their senior years effectively canceled by a pandemic. And if you're listening the day this show goes up, January 4th, you can still order tickets to stream the Ratatouzical on demand until 7 p.m. Eastern Time, although maybe with how well it went, they'll extend that purchase period. So if you're curious at all, it's worth checking. I can't imagine they won't make it available again somehow in the future. Well, that is it for today. As always, this show was produced by Ride Home Media and Kotke.org. I am Jackson Bird, and I'm going to go imagine just how much more Ratatouille content we could produce with quantum internet. I hope you are all having a fantastic start to 2021, and I will talk to you again tomorrow.